Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back Ben Sapola. I'm excited uh, to kick off a series of conversations on one of the most valuable assets of our city, our public spaces. From the Italian piazza to the town square to lively sidewalks and welcoming public facilities, public space has been a catalyst for civic interaction and engagement throughout history. Collectively, our public spaces are a major asset for New York one that requires dedicated leadership and innovative thinking. In New York, we have this rare and extraordinary leadership in our next speaker, Jeanette Sadekan. As commissioner of the New York City Department of Transportation since 2007, Jeanette has truly changed the way we view and interact with public spaces in our city. It's no stretch to say that she has revolutionized our streets for the better, and under her leadership, the DOT continues to work to make our city streets more accessible, more desirable to drivers, cyclists, and pedestrians. Beginning with Sustainable Streets, the DOT's first strategic plan published in 2008, Jeanette has implemented a multitude of innovative projects. The creation of Broadway Boulevard, new select bus service routes in the Bronx and Manhattan, the installation of 23 plazas, the addition of more than 285 miles of on-street street bike lanes, city bike, weekend pedestrian walks, and the publication of a street design manual and a street works manual. This, of course, on top of leading the operation and maintenance of 6,300 miles of streets and highways, nearly 800 bridges, 1.3 million street signs, and of course the Staten Island Ferry, which carries more than 22 million passengers each year. Jeanette is also responsible for completely reinvigorating the DOT, making it a key agency in the Bloomberg administration. I am so pleased to welcome to the stage a person who never, ever, ever sleeps, um, <laughs> Commissioner Jeanette Sadekan. Well, thank you. It is very exciting to be here again. And I know you've had a good morning talking about uh, issues at the 10,000 foot level. And I'm going to take us a little closer to ground level today. And if you care about the quality of our streets, and I think the fact that you're here means that you do, um, you've seen the changes that we've made over the last six years, changes that have improved the quality of life uh, in the city of New York, the economic performance, uh, of the city of New York and the sustainability uh, of this great city. And just a few years ago, if you talked about pedestrian plazas, if you talked about bike share, if you talked about wayfinding, uh, you might get a blank stare from fellow New Yorkers. Uh, but today, we're a city of changed expectations. There we go. Uh, and what was controversial uh, just a few years ago, uh, things like closing Times Square, is pretty much commonplace today. Very much accepted uh, way of doing business. And Times Square today is now a pedestrian oasis. Uh, it's an economic powerhouse, new businesses opening all over, a place where people, even New Yorkers, like to go, spend time, and spend money. Uh, this historic transformation is nearly complete, and we've got the reconstruction underway, which will fortify the crossroads of the world so that it will continue for generations to come. And I hope you'll join us this December when we cut the ribbon on the first phase of this reconstruction. And it's not just in Manhattan that uh, we're doing these plazas. Uh, we're doing placemaking plazas all over the city, all five boroughs, and all kinds of neighborhoods, uh, like this one in East New York, uh, turning a barren streetscape into a neighborhood uh, public space. And there are now over 50 pedestrian plazas uh, in design, construction, planning, uh, in all five boroughs. And each one is requested by the community. Each one 
is maintained by the community. And together, they help make good on Mayor Bloomberg's Plan YC pledge to have every New Yorker be within a short distance of open space. But what we found over the past six years is that you don't need to build a plaza to build public space. And you can do this with your t existing tools and by rebalancing your streets. And with 6,000 miles of streets and 12,000 miles of sidewalks, we have a lot of raw material to work with. This is a stretch on Columbus Avenue, uh, which like a lot of streets uh, across the city, uh, was a bleak stretch of concrete uh, with no place to sit down. Uh, as you may have heard, we did a study uh, a few years back, uh, uh, an audit of the, of the city streets, and we found literally New York City was a, a, seat, a city without seats, no place to sit down. And so we've worked to change that. And today, uh, Columbus Avenue is a neighborhood space with benches and attractive landscaping uh, that invites people uh, to enjoy the space. And in fact, we've proven, I think, that if you build it, they will sit down. And amazing things happen when you do something as simple as mark out a space in paint. And you can see the effect here, the terracotta paint, this is on uh, First Avenue, which creates a red carpet for buses and speeds the uh, commute for millions of New Yorkers uh, every day. And if you add pedestrian islands and markings, you have a street that works better for business, that works better for transit, uh, and it's safer for everyone. Uh, this is uh, Ninth Avenue that many of you may have gone down, and it's just one lane uh, that we've uh, put in place uh, on top of the 350 miles of on-street bike paths that we've put down uh, in the last six years. And I think we've uh, transformed New York City uh, from a bike-at-your-own-risk city uh, to a city that's really become uh, a bike capital of the nation. And uh, while bike share was a foreign concept some six years ago, uh, today we have over 90,000 annual members just since uh, we launched this uh, with Mayor Bloomberg this spring. How many of you are city bike riders and members? Well, that is great. And thanks to you, um, they've taken these, everybody here and uh, the folks uh, on the streets right now have taken four and a half million trips uh, since we've launched. You have all ridden nine million miles so far. That's uh, 360 times around the earth. Uh, and I don't even know how many pints of Ben and Jerry's ice cream that is, but that, that's a lot. That's a lot of ice cream. Um, and uh, you can see the annual membership, it just continues to soar. It is clearly a summer blockbuster, and in very short order, it's become just a common way that New Yorkers get around. You can almost, you know, don't almost remember that it didn't used to be there, and just fleets of blue bikes going by. Uh, it's really exciting to see. And all of these uh, new approaches to our streets are incorporated in our street design manual, uh, which we first launched in 2009. And today, I'm proud to unveil the second edition uh, with uh, projects that are validated uh, by real-world experience, new street designs and um, uh, new street uh, design uh, innovations. And it includes and incorporates these new innovative designs uh, into the DNA of the way the city does business. So anybody that touches the street, public sector, private sector, follows these new rules of the road. And it starts with uh, case studies on how you, that go through how you design the surface of a street, which is just as important uh, as what's below the street. You know, DOT work in the past is really focused on you know, what's, what's below the line, and this is really uh, how you treat the surface. And this is uh, Willoughby Plaza. Uh, we cut the ribbon on this uh, earlier this year. It also includes case studies uh, on how to take a dangerous street like West Houston and turn it into a safety design success story. And the manual also gets down to the very granular level uh, of materials that we use in the streets. In this case, you know, everybody loves cobblestones. Uh, I hardly know anybody that doesn't love cobblestones. But in terms of street designs, they can be um, charming trip hazards uh, that, that are hard to navigate, that easily flood, uh, they can be tough to bike on, and they're really hard to walk on in high heels. Uh, 
So um, we haven't cured for that yet. But we uh, developed new options for uh, cobblestones so that, that they're pre-tumbled and their edges are smooth uh, and they're naturally worn. And we also have options for granite pavers uh, to incorporate into uh, those designs to make it an easy to transverse uh, path for bikes. So you can maintain and you can restore neighborhoods uh, with historical elegance while removing some of the stumbling blocks uh, to walking and biking in neighborhoods. And we've also laid out the anatomy of pedestrian safety islands uh, in the manual and showed that a safety installation can be incorporated into a streetscape enhancement. And here, you know, you may not even see the safety uh, of the pedestrian island for the trees. It, it just flows that naturally into the streetscape. Another feature in the manual is the new city light. And it's the product of a design competition uh, and provides attractive uh, fixture and uses LED lights. And we recently announced that we're going to be using these, putting them down for the first time on the streets of New York on 125th Street as part of our bus and streetscape improvement project up there. So pretty soon uh, we'll be seeing uh, our streets in a brand new light. Another addition to the manual for posterity and for posteriors uh, is City Bench. And as I said, it can be a hard city to sit down in. You know, you see those pictures of New Yorkers that are just, you know, perched on these fire hydrants, you know, and just any little small surface to sit down on, which is really not the mark of a world-class city. And so we're working, we've got a thousand of these new uh, benches that will be uh, installed by the end of the year uh, in neighborhoods all across the city. We also have guidance for artwork uh, on our streets. And here uh, with the display cases uh, that invite the eyes and uh, give pedestrians a reason to stop. We also have a playbook for the installation of bike corrals, which can provide room for uh, a dozen bike in, uh, bikes in place of uh, two parking spots. Uh, and these, again, are requested by the community. And there's a big demand uh, for these all over town. I think one of the most exciting new additions is the first ever chapter on landscape improvements. And with the prospect of global climate change and extreme weather right in front of us, uh, we have to find new ways to work with the built and the natural environment to use them uh, to their fullest advantage. And like so many of the changes that we see on the street, uh, landscaping offers real benefits uh, to the design and the operation of the street and makes it much more attractive. So with tree pits and bioswales or rain gardens, uh, we can capture and treat uh, uh, rainwater runoff and particularly focused on areas with chronic flooding. And they can fit seamlessly into the street. Uh, this is a bioswale that uh, is in place right now on Dean Street. And instead of just throwing down seeds and seeing what grows, uh, we've come up with a kind of DOT farmer's almanac, which lists the character, uh, characteristics of trees and shrubs and perennials. Uh, so you see what blooms and how high it grows and what color it's in. And it's a great new uh, addition to the manual. So we've consolidated uh, all this information into one place because there are no national designs when it comes, national standards when it comes to street designs for cities. Um, there are designs that dictate how many cars plus, you know, how many pedestrians over X period of time will yield a stop sign, right? There are standards about the width of a lane. There are standards about the color of a truck uh, through sign. Um, but our cities really need a playbook uh, that provides detail on something as basic as how a street looks and feels. Something that provides not only artistic renderings, uh, which can highlight the world of the possible, uh, but also provide street-tested guidance of real-world experience. And the Street Design Manual is that working document. And I really hope it becomes a well-thumbed fixture in city planning rooms and on the bookshelves of designers. Uh, much as the designs it contains become very real fixtures of streetscapes 
uh, uh, here in New York and, and across the country and across the world, uh, we think this is going to be uh, a new world order uh, going forward to create 21st century streets. So I really want to thank uh, Margaret Newman and Wendy Foyer who worked so hard on the street design manual. They worked tirelessly on this, much like uh, everyone in this room in the Municipal Arts Society works so tirelessly to improve the quality of life, uh, the livability, and the sustainability of New York. And it's just been a wonderful six years, and I want to thank you uh, for your partnership uh, in what we've been able to do. Thank you.